four different products, uh, which all have this uh, purpose. And so, um, you know, one of them being the Advantage Plus. Um, excuse me for one second. I think I'm going to have to do some stuff here to stop something from. The last one it popped up like four times on me. Uh, products with that. We'll get started with the present gal. Uh, we are located just north of Chicago in a suburb called Glenview. Um, we're, we're 77 years old as a company founded in 1936. We're being led currently by the third generation of Holsons. So there's a lot of good little stories here in that, you know, in these days and you know, in this time to be in business for 77 years is uh, pretty remarkable on its own. But still being owned by the same family is um, in itself a pretty good, um, a pretty good thing, story to tell there. Uh, we are a mutual insurance company, probably consider ourselves a mid-sized company, uh, which has its benefits for sure in that we're able to uh, do a lot of different things, but you know, also stay, you know, stay true to our path of um, you know, providing a niche product for, you know, for the agents and for the insureds out there. Um, we are licensed in 49 states. We don't do uh, any business in uh, New York or in uh, Florida. Those are the two states we don't do any business in whatsoever. So, you know, so as you can tell, we are we do have a national footprint, and a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about today, you know, you know, are going to be we're going to try to keep it somewhat generic, but I'm going to try to talk about it from a national perspective. All right, so starting off with Advantage Plus. Advantage Plus has been a product that's been um, around. I guess the best way to put it is for about eight years now, and um, what it is is a hospital indemnity plan. A standalone product. It's not governed by, you know, a federal reg. You know, it's not governed by federal uh, CMS guidelines or anything like that. It's a, you know, it's a product you can sell all year long. All the plans we talk about here, you can sell all year long. And so, you know, it's something that allows you, if you sell this product, it allows you to talk to your client whenever and however you, whenever you want, because it is a, you know, they are your clients and they have a product outside of, outside of, um, you know, the federal products that are that we're all looking at these days. But uh, when you're looking at the Advantage Plus, now I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say that you have to do it this way. But you know, what we see on average is that the the monthly premium is on is on average around fifty dollars a month, which so that's something that we try to target, you know, because what ends up happening is that, you know, when you're changing somebody off of health, you know, other health insurance, and you're putting them into another type of plan that might be zero premium or very low premium, you're going to net effect save them quite a few dollars from a monthly cash flow perspective. And so, by asking back for forty or fifty dollars a month, isn't going to affect the client, you know, your client's, uh, you know, cash flow in terms of from a negative perspective. And so, and they're going to get coverage and cash available to you know take care of some of the you know some of the copays and such that are out there today. So that's you know, that's what the purpose and the idea is behind the Advantage Plus. You know, from a product perspective, um, we're going to start off uh, with the nuts and bolts of the plan in that. It's a daily hospital confinement product. You know that's you know that's and it's a um, you got two plan options, two choices to make at the very beginning. You know you got to decide if, for your client if you want to do a 10 or 21 day benefit period. Like if you're a, if you're an agent that's like in, in Pennsylvania, for example, your benefit period in Pennsylvania or even in New Jersey would be a 31 day benefit period. So you got to make those you know so. For those of you that have a 10 or 21 day option, you gotta make a decision on what you want to do. Most folks are doing a 10 day benefit period because the copays that they're dealing with are somewhere between you know five, six, seven, or eight days, and so the 10 day benefit period is plenty. Uh, the, it does restore the benefit period does restore if the insured's out of the hospital for 61 days or longer. That's the key right there that you want to you know, focus in on is no matter what scenario a client may give you or you can think of, always. Take a look and say, has it been 61 days or longer? And, you know, to to determine what you know what the what the appropriate answer would be. The reason why I say that is that it doesn't matter if you use three days in of the benefit period and then it's been 61 days or longer. They're going to get a brand new 10 day benefit period. Doesn't matter if you use all 10 days at 61 days or longer. They're going to get a brand new 10 day benefit period. So always make sure you use 61 days. Sorry, I don't mean to beat that one to death there, but. It's, uh, it's actually a very important uh, piece of the of the puzzle here to make sure that your clients understand that. Uh, the rates 
on the Advantage Plus are issue age based. So whatever their age is today is what the premium is going to be calculated. And they're not going to be going up every year based on, you know, based on their current ages. So it's whatever the issue age is is what the premium is going to be. Now, do we reserve the right at some point you know, in the future um, based on experience of the block of business to ask for a rate increase on the whole block of business? Sure, we do reserve, we do reserve that right. But I can tell you, based on the information that I have and know, I don't, I don't foresee that happening for a very, 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 very long time or if ever. So that takes care of the benefit period. Now, let's get into the limit of daily confinement amount. You can uh, choose from 100 to $600 per day in $10 increments. Or if in Pennsylvania, for example, you can do a $50 minimum uh, per day uh, daily confinement benefit. You don't have to, this product, you don't have to mirror up benefits with other plans. You know, it can be, it can be whatever, whatever your client can afford or whatever you think is a, is, a, is a good option for your client. If your client has a copay of $220, it does, you don't have to give them a $220, you know, benefit, you know, for the daily confinement. You can give them a $250, or if they got $250, you might want to give them $300. Whatever you want to do and whatever your client wants is, is, is fine with us from that perspective. The only thing that we ask is that, you know, in total coverage with GTL, we ask that you don't go over the $600 in total per day of benefit. The bottom uh, section here is probably the um, the important, real pretty important piece here is that it's all, this, this is about to keep, uh, to try to make sure that we don't get in trouble with anybody in uh, explaining the product in an inappropriate way and saying that Advantage Plus is a limited benefit policy. It's not a Medicare supplement policy or certificate. It does not fully supplement any federal medic any federal Medicare health insurance. If your client is eligible for Medicare, then they review the, the guide for medical health insurance and Medicare available from GTL. All right. So basically what that says, guys, is this. It says that when you're talking to your clients, don't say, don't say, hey, Mrs. Jones, I got this great Medicare Advantage wraparound product, or I got a great Medicare Advantage supplement, um, because this product is not that. This is a standalone hospital indemnity plan. So I think you guys get the gist of it. Uh, between us, as you're talking amongst coworkers and colleagues and so forth, hey, did you see that wrap? Did you guys use that wrap plan? Yeah, you guys can talk amongst yourselves however you want with that. But to clients, just keep it as a hospital indemnity plan, and you won't, you won't have any issues. So now we've talked about um, the you know the base plan. So now there's some additional riders that we've uh, added onto the plan to create some additional some flexibility in what uh, your, your clients' needs may, may be. I'll go through the riders in total first, and then I'll tell you. Then I, we'll go through what we you know what we see happening more often. Uh, the ambulance rider we it provides the client $200 per trip up to a $2,500 lifetime max. Uh, there's a cancer rider first occurrence diet, First occurrence lump sum cancer um, benefit. Um, you use it once, and then the policy and that rider goes away along with the premium. The benefits that you can um, get for the, from this uh, rider would be 2,500, 5,000, 7,500, or 10. There's also a skilled nursing rider, which is uh, if the insured is um, is under coded as observation or confinement for three days, and then they go into a skilled nursing facilities, will provide them $120 per day from days 21 to 100. Uh, lump sum hospital rider is uh, 250, 500, 750. It's something that upon first day of being confined, uh, first day of being confined in the hospital, that they can get in addition to their daily confinement amount. Uh, some folks may run across uh, some clients that may not have may not have any wants or desire to get anything more than Medicare Part A. Uh, so you can use this lump sum hospital rider along with the daily confinement benefit to cover their Part A deductible, for example. So you can, let's say if you did $100 a day of uh, daily confinement, you did 750 of the lump sum. Day one, they get 850 and then each additional day, they get $100. So it's around the day four, they'll be able to cover their Part A uh, hospital um, co uh, co uh, deductible there. Uh, also, you got the outpatient surgery rider. The outpatient surgery rider is based on two times per year, calendar year, okay? So if you have uh, cataracts done once in the beginning of the year, cataracts done the second part of the year, you'll get, you know, say, $500 for each outpatient surgery for that. Um, so you got $250, $500, $750, or $1,000. And then also, to, in addition to uh, that rider, you're also going to have an accidental death and dismemberment rider, which would provide a benefit of $5,000 or $10,000. Now, 
you're probably wondering, okay, there's a ton of riders on here. You know, we're trying to keep this premium on average somewhere around $50 or so a month. What do we see coming in? What we see coming in is an ambulance rider with most every, probably about 75% of the applications are coming with an ambulance rider. The reason being is that the cost on the ambulance rider is about uh, $3 and some change per month. And so it's a, and it also cover, covers an exposure of uh, an ambulance copay. The other one that, the other two that, I, that we like a lot, but the one I see more of currently right now at least, is the cancer rider. The cancer rider is on, is on um, probably about half of the applications. The reason being is that you got, you got the uh, radiation chemotherapy copay, which is a 20% copay, which gets applied to out-of-pocket max. And if you, when you know the cancer numbers and you understand, you understand the probabilities of cancer striking you know, anybody, you know, it's a great rider to put on because your max amount of pocket on these, you know, on the senior products are six, seven hundred bucks. So you know if they have radiation chemotherapy, they're gonna hit that six, seven hundred because radiation chemotherapy costs are fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars and twenty percent of those numbers are gonna be way over the max amount of pocket. So it's definitely from a pricing perspective and you know, premium perspective for the client versus the benefit they get, it's a great, great, great deal for the, you know, for the client at the end of the day. Um, also, the skilled nursing rider is a pretty good benefit. Also, uh, we see, we see probably about uh, probably 20, 20, 25 percent of the policies that come in with a skilled nursing rider. This rider also does restore with the insurance out of the skilled nursing facility or a hospital for 61 days or longer. So that's another, um, that's another nice little rider there that that we see a lot of. Uh, probably uh, sometime, you know, for those of you that are contracted currently and those that will be soon, you'll see that uh, we're going to be sending out some emails probably somewhere around the 1st of October. Um, we've uh, made some adjustments to a couple of riders and uh, this going to, and so some of the adjustments that we've made is that the ambulance rider, we're limiting it to uh, four times per year for the same $200, $2,500 uh, lifetime max, but we're limited at the four times per year. But we also, what we did here was also, in the states where it's available, we, our CHS Protection Plus product, we included that as part of the, as part of the Advantage Plus plan in lieu of a cancer rider. We put the CHS Protection Plus in there because it has a recurrence benefit. And uh, because of that recurrence benefit, that rider will, that, you know, that, that portion of the, the cancer benefit would never then go away. So I, we thought it might be, we thought it would be a better interest of the client to be able to have you know, continuing cancer coverage for amounts of five, ten, fifteen, or twenty thousand dollars by putting on the uh, the CHS Protection Plus as part of the Advantage Advantage Plus application. They will get a separate policy for the CHS product that you when you if they do apply for it in those states. But it's a much better situation we believe for you know for the clients you know at the end of the day. And also, as, you, as you're going to notice probably here, I talked about skilled nursing before being one hundred twenty dollars per day. From days 21 to 100, when we come, when the new, with some of the newer states here, we're going to have a new skilled nursing rider where we adjusted it to be a payout of a choice of 100, 150, or 200 per day from days 1 through 50. So there's some nice little adjustments that we made. You know, we've got you know, we've got to keep um, making adjustments with our product just because of the changes that are going on and the needs that you that you have you know, to help your clients uh, protect themselves. So that's why there's some adjustments being made, but we will be offering. So we will be offering uh, the current version of the Advantage Plus and the new version, you know, throughout the end of the year. So if you if you are if you like the older version, you know, the original version better, and you want to keep using that through the end of the year, feel free to do that. If you like uh, using the new version, make sure you know just use the new version, no problems at all. From an underwriting perspective, the simplified jet issue policy. Real simple. No MIB, no phone history interview. Yes, no application. If they answer yes to the health questions. They don't qualify for the plan. It's as simple as that. Uh, the questions do it, are based on 12 months. So 12 months look back. So the last, you know, so that's um, so that makes it a uh, shorter time frame there. Uh, we do offer a guaranteed issue from age of 64 and a half to age 65 and a half for the first five questions of the application. The cancer rider or the cancer the HS protection plus portion of it are never considered to be in a guaranteed issue period. You always have to answer those questions. But for the 
but the first five questions between 64 and a half, 65 and a half are are guaranteed issue. Because something means guaranteed issue doesn't mean that um, there isn't any still pre-existing condition uh, clauses that are effect. You know, so you know they may be able to. You know, if you didn't have them an opportunity to, if a client had something go on, and they could, they had to answer yes to a question, but they're in guaranteed issue period. They're not, you know, like I say, they don't have to answer anything. But if they were being treated for something within six months of the policy being issued, and they caused them to be hospitalized within the first six months of the policy being issued, that wouldn't be a covered event until their until their hospitalization occurred six months of one day. So that's basically what um, the pre-ex is all about. If anybody's there from North Carolina, in North Carolina, you don't have any to worry about pre-existing conditions. Uh, the issue wages on the, on the on the Advanced Plus is from age 40 to age 85. Uh, the cancer rider is available from you know, up to age 79. On the new uh, lump sum cancer uh, CHS product, that's available to age 85. And then the ambulance rider is available to age 80. Keep in mind, uh, this product is a guaranteed renewable product, so that means that if you purchase this at age 85, let's say the Advanced Plus, as long as the client continues to pay premium, you know, until they're 95, 100, it's, they're going to have the policy enforced. So that's so that's uh, pretty that's pretty nice for them to have continuous to have continual coverage. The application, short and simple. You know, you can do a husband and wife on one application. Uh, you can answer the, you know, they don't have to be identical coverages for the spouses. They're going to each get their own separate policies. You know, so uh, the first five questions are the base questions, and then the last two, the second two are for the cancer. And always make sure to answer question number eight, which is the replacement question. That's, uh, and then the second page is a detail of uh, what we, of what you are, what you quoted your your uh, client of what kind of coverage they wanted. So if they wanted uh, $250 a day. 10-day benefit period, just mark those all off exactly what you quoted as part of the pricing, and then you submit the application. At the bottom of the uh, back of the second page, you could request an effective date going forward, um, you know, so you have that option. We don't require anybody to, you know, say, okay, you know what, if you see somebody today on the uh, 24th of September that they automatically have to be, you know, effective 10-1. Uh, it could be effective, it can be effective the 25th or the 3rd of the month, 5th of the, whatever. There's no set date for effective dates there. All right, so a little tip here, make sure you use the correct state versions of the application. You always want to use the state of residence of the insured, you know, so that's, uh, that's important right there. And always make sure that you have your agent code uh, clearly printed on the application so that this way, um, you, you know, this way we can make sure we credit the appropriate person. And then another thing that we do find that causes sometimes a little bit of a hiccup is uh, the insureds uh, must sign the bank draft form for PAC. Let's take a look at some uh, sample rates. Uh, we, I did it based on $250 a day of daily benefit, a 10-day benefit period with ambulance rider. As you can see at age 65, it's very affordable at $28.90 a month. At age 70, still very affordable at you know, $34.65. If I wanted to add the skilled nursing rider, onto the original benefits there, it would bring my cost up to thirty-six sixteen a month. I'm sorry, thirty-three thirty-six sixty-six a month. And so as you can see there, you know, it's only an eight dollar increase, roughly eight dollar increase per month just to add a skilled nursing rider. Not not a lot of not a lot of dollars to be able to give them that $120 per day benefit. Or instead of the skilled nursing rider, if you wanted to add the cancer rider, that would uh, for five thousand dollar benefit at age 765, that would be 42.97 a month. So, for an additional 13 dollars a month, you can provide your client a 5,000 dollar benefit to help them with that maximum out of pocket for radiation chemotherapy. I think it's very affordable at 42.97, even at age 70, at 50.69, very affordable and a very, and a very good rider to have for, with, for your, with your clients there. So I said earlier that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to match it up exactly. So what we see agents doing is that they're trying to either, for a couple reasons, they either think about what may happen in the future, or they may want to provide their clients for, with some additional dollars to help them out with some other copays that they may come into. You know, because once you get into a hospital, what's the first thing that the doctors say when they discharge you? Come, you know, come to my office for a follow-up visit so I can check you out, and make sure you're okay. So guess what? Guess what comes along with that doctor's office visit? 
another copay. So by you know, if you had a two hundred and fifty dollar copay with your plan, and you offered your client a three hundred dollar daily benefit, so we took care of the two fifty to cover their hospital confinement copay. Now you got an extra fifty dollars per day that they received to be able to use for other copays. You can use it for whatever the client may want, or they don't have to use it for anything. They can just uh, take the money and go off for dinner. So just to kind of show you the cost differences here, it's really you'll see nominal cost difference at uh, $300 a day with an ambulance rider, $34.34. I believe we, let's go back real quick here. $28.90, right? So not much we're talking there. We're talking about $6 a month difference between the $250 and the uh, $300. Um, if you had the skilled nursing rider, you're talking there, you know, $41.76. Or if you had the cancer rider, that's 48.07. So the same $6 spread there continues on in that theme right there. So it's very, uh, it's a very good option for your clients. You know, potentially, you know, obviously based on budget reasons, but if they can afford it. It'd be a great deal, great deal for your clients. Now I wanted to show you some uh, a rate example with the new with uh, the new riders and the way we're doing it. Uh, it's going to be done in the future. But if you looked at 250 a day with a 10-day benefit period of the ambulance rider, it'd be 29.74 at age 65. If you're at the skilled nursing rider at 150 dollars a day from days one through 50, it's uh, 46.96 a month. And then, or if you were to add the CHS Protection Plus, then you're looking at uh, age 65, 43.58. So with the, even with the adjustments that we made to try to make it even a more a richer plan than it already is. We're still able to keep the premium right there in the sweet spot of around fifty dollars a month, even at age seventy. When you're looking at it with uh, ECHS, still looking at fifty-two dollars a month. Great, it's a great opportunity still. So uh, hopefully, you know, when talking about Advanced Plus, hopefully you can see it is a, um, you know, it's a positive win-win for, you know, for everybody involved. I mean, for your clients, for yourself. I mean, from your, you know, your clients are going to be happy with you because you're not taking money out of their savings to, you know, so they can pay all these copays that they're going to have. But from your perspective, it also solidifies your initial sale that you made with the client by adding a plan like this that will help your persistency out and also increase your income opportunity because it, you do get paid commission for selling a second product. You know, so you know it is definitely a good opportunity here for you, you know, for you there. So, technology. This is I'll start off a little bit here on technology in that. For a medium-sized company, we, we definitely have some big aspirations. And um, about a year ago or so, we came out with an iPad app, which you can get through the App Store. And uh, you can basically what this iPad app is is um, it's something you do in front of your client. You don't have to be connected to uh, with the internet while you're doing this, and you can just um, complete the application, have your client sign it, and then uh, once you get connected to Wi-Fi back at the office, submit the application, and within five minutes. The policy will be approved, so that's that's pretty cool. We also have an uh, we also have something called the Agent Portal, which is available through our web website at gtlic.com. And once you get a writing number and you get access into your into your you know through your um, into into the portal there, you'll be able to input information on behalf of your client. Type in everything from the you know their name, their signatures, everything. You just type it in. And then it's a simple voice verification call that they would have to complete, to um, which would take about three minutes. And then once that's completed, you submit the application. And then once uh, once we determine that the voice verification call has been done and the, and the submission of the application occurred within five minutes, then that policy would be approved also. So it's, we're really the really big thing about it. Electronic here is going to be obviously obviously speed, but also it's about killing the amendments because you're not, not going to allow you to submit info, you know, information or forget to submit information unless the field is filled in. You know, many times, you know, you know, I'm guilty of it. I'm sure we all are guilty of it to some degree. You know, we forget to fill out a certain, you know, certain box or you know, put the additional information somewhere. And you know, then all of a sudden it generates an amendment. Then we've got to go get it signed and then, then turn it in and then get the policy put in force at that point. So by using the electronic uh, means, it helps cut down on all that. So now the, the iPad app, if you're interested in taking a look at it in more detail, I would tell you please uh, go to www.cellgtl.com. And, and if you scroll down uh, probably the middle part of that page there, 
you'll find a bunch of different tutorials that you, will show you how the iPad works. So if you wanted to watch the full demonstration of how the iPad works, you go from, you just start from one that's like about 27 um, minute long uh, video. You start, you watch it from beginning to end and it'll give you everything from, uh, you know, of how, how to look at a brochure, how to submit applications, how to fill out applications. It'll give you that whole, a whole tutorial there. But what I'll do here right now is that we're going to kind of go through a couple pages here of what it looks like. That's the cover of the brochure that you get access to. Right here is the application itself. You know, where you're just pressing the button. There's the signature where you can have your client sign, and there's the email. And, um, you know, it's a pretty uh, pretty quick process and a slick process. So with that being said, we're going to switch gears a little bit here. Uh, for those of you that... Um, you know, I kind of look at, uh, you know, for we're talk a couple cancer plans here. Uh, for those, I know many of you probably know this to stat, but for those of you that don't, it shocks me whenever, you know, when I first learned about it a few years ago, but one out of two men and women are diagnosed with cancer. You know, it's, um, and when, you know, the survival rates for cancer versus 20 years ago, big, big difference. I mean, 20 years ago, it was almost, you know, you knew it could be more of a terminal situation, whereas today, it's more of a curing situation, and with and with that being said, if you're you know if it's, you know you're gonna be you know more chances are better to get cured for a certain cancer. That means that you're gonna pro your client or the person uh, dealing with cancer is gonna have to incur more out of pocket expense, you know, because um, it's not about you know it's not gonna be about the um, the treatment per se because of you know because the health insurance plans will cover it as long as it's FDA approved. But you know if you're in uh, if you're in Harrisburg, PA, for example, maybe you might want to go to Minnesota to go get treatment for a specific thing, or go down to Houston for a specific uh, treatment. Uh, you know those all cost money, and most folks have little to no to no savings. So by offering them a cancer plan for you know to use any which way they want for travel or even to cover their bills, you know, or to do anything to that effect, you know. It's, it got a good deal for them because you're really taking pennies to get access to dollars because at the end of the day, you don't want them to shrink down their savings accounts or the 401ks or the child, you know, college fund, you know, or, or even at the worst case scenario, go into debt. You want them to be able to have this extra cash and pro prolong the ability for them to go in, you know, to use those other funds, you know, to take care of lump sum cancer available in your state. It's, you know, the policy terminates. Uh, if you've got folks that are over the age of 50, the minimum amount is fifty thousand dollars. So if you have somebody that uh, you were talking with Advantage Plus Wise and they didn't qualify Advantage Plus Wise, you can still offer them a, a cancer plan for five thousand dollar benefit. You can cover them in, in, in the states where it's available there. If you want to sell this as a standalone cancer plan and if you want to add maybe a heart attack and stroke rider, the heart attack stroke rider is a twenty five percent benefit in addition to the cancer amount. And so, for example, if I had a fifty thousand dollar cancer plan and I had a heart attack stroke first, I would get paid $12,500. And then at some future point, if I were to get diagnosed with cancer, I would get $50,000, and then the policy would terminate. We do offer individual family coverages, and then the issue ages are from zero to age 79. Here's a sample here of what the product premium can look like. So like I said earlier about the folks that you may talk about Advanced Plus with, but let's say they don't qualify because they answered yes to one of those health, five health questions but they may still qualify for a lump sum cancer and cover that racial chemotherapy copay. At age 65 for $5,000, you're talking $1,386 a month. Very, very affordable. It's going to take 30, you know, if you did add it, if you put it into a savings account, $13.86 a month, it'll take you over 30 years to even equal the $5,000. At, you know, a $10,000 benefit amount at $2,772. If you wanted to add the heart attack stroke rider at $10,000, that's all amounts at $3,662. Obviously, this product is an underage product, also. So, if you have uh, if you have a want or need to talk to employers and as voluntary benefits, please feel free. We can do list bills for a minimum of four lives, or for a minimum of four lives. The CHS Protection Plus, great, great, great cancer plan. It's uh, it's phenomenal. That's uh, one more can I say about it. I really do like this plan a lot. It's three products in one. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, it's a little different than the uh, supplemental solutions in that we do offer benefits from $10,000, $75,000, $5,000 increments, but the issue is just go up to age 85 instead of 79. 
We offer four different rate classes, individual, single parent, couple, and family. The recurrence benefit I'll touch on in a second, but we also do, co also do include coverage for cancer in situ. So that's, uh, that's really neat there in itself. Um, for the heart attack stroke part of it, because you can do a standalone heart attack stroke plan with this uh, CHS product, the heart attack stroke part of it will have a coronary angioplasty or bypass benefit. So basically what that means is that if you went into the, into the doctor for a checkup and they did an EKG and they, and they determined that uh, you have a blockage and you have to have angioplasty or bypass uh, performed, you'll get 10% of your benefit paid out one time for, uh, for getting the angioplasty and bypass done without having a heart attack occurrence. So it's kind of a little bit of a wellness benefit, I guess, um, a good way to look at it. The recurrence benefit. This is awesome, guys. In the, in the past, if you've ever sold cancer insurance in the past, it was use it and it's over, it's done. Now, you get diagnosed with cancer, you go into remission, if you get another occurrence of cancer, and if it's been five years or longer, then you're going to get 100% benefit paid out again. If it's less than five years, let's say four years, it'd be 50%. Through two to three years, you get 25%. And if it's after one year, you get 10%. Great benefit. No additional cost. It's part of the base cost pricing. There's nothing to add to it. Great, great benefit. And probably another positive from your perspective as agents is that the policy stays in force. Your renewals continue to, stay to, to continue coming in. So that's another little positive from your perspective, too. Uh, we do have a uh, four um, optional riders. We kind of you could add a lump sum heart attack or stroke onto the um, cancer plan. The two separate buckets of dollars, two separate recurrence benefits. Very neat. Uh, there's an intensive care rider available. Uh, we also have a return to premium that's available. That um, if that uh, is available for in most states for the products there. And then we have a therapy and wellness rider, which is a very inexpensive rider. You know, for your client, you know, for your client uh, to be able to get some additional dollars for having a test completed once a year. Uh, so, when you, if you're interested in taking a look at the CHS, take a look at the right. You know, if you have any questions, obviously I'd be happy to answer those for you. Underwriting-wise, simplified issue, short yes/no application. We've got five-year look-back period. The rates are uh, unisex rates, but there are tobacco, non-tobaccos, and uh, we do uh, an RX check on every application. And then, but we don't do any. Uh, we don't do an MIB or a phone interview. So the RX check is the only thing that's going to. Yeah, that's, that could be a potential uh, knockout for a client if they didn't uh, disclose any uh, pertinent information to you. Some great examples of the uh, CHS product is that, you know, if you're looking at age 40 for a $10,000 lump sum cancer plan, you're looking at 1406 a month. Age 65 for, for 10,000, you're looking at 2588 a month. Very affordable. If you were to do just a cancer heart attack stroke policy on its own, at age 40, it's $7.89 a month. At age 65, it'd be $20.94 a month. As you can see here, cancer with a heart attack stroke, it would be at age 65, $40.96. So it's some good, you know, some good, um, some good opportunities here to give, you, to provide conversations and or start a conversation with clients. Maybe you never know where it's going to go for you. Okay, so now I'm going to switch gears again on you guys. Now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Recover Cash, which is a short-term care nursing home policy, which um, which is a uh, a new, relatively new product for uh, you know this this rendition is a new product. We've had short-term care products in the past uh, at GTL. Um, we took it off the market a couple years ago to, to kind of to revamp it, make you know make it bring it up to date some, and then we came out with it about uh, I want to say about a year or so ago, and um, you know to try to help out uh, for various markets that are going to be out there that we're going to talk about real quick here. But, um, you know, some of the things that we don't ever really pay, realize is that, you know, if you were to do a one-year stay in a nursing home, you know, the range can be from $36,000 to $112,000 of annual cost for that nursing home. And obviously, you know, I think we all know that there's a, there's a problem out there in the hospital world where they're, where they're coding a lot of insured as observation versus confinement. And uh, so what happens is that if they're coded as observation, Medicare isn't paying for, for the nursing home, you know, skilled cares and so forth. You know, so, so it's an issue. And so that's where a short-term care product can be of definite help for your clients. You'll be able to get coverage from day one. And the way that the, and the, way that the product will work 
is that you're going to have a base plan, which is from ages 40 to age 84, that will provide benefits for a custodial, intermediate, or skilled care. The daily benefit amount that you can get is $50 to $300 per day in $10 increments. You got elimination period with day from day zero or a 20-day limb. And the benefit period, as you can see, is from 30, 45, 60, 90, 180, or 360. It can't be a full year because then it would be considered long-term care. This is a health plan. This is not long-term care. This is an indemnity-based product. So you, can, uh, you, have a, you have some options here to be able to fit your client's budgetary needs or needs um, in general. So there's a pretty uh, flexible plan here. So in addition to the base plan, you, also have, you can also add a home health care rider, which is a $25, $50, $75 per visit rider for home health care. And you've got an elimination period of 0 to 20 days for that. But then you've got 90 or 180 visits is your benefit period. Once they use up that 90 or 180, then that rider is over. Then that, then that rider would come off the plan, and the premium for that, the cost of that rider would then also come off the plan. The way you would qualify for benefits on the short-term care product here is having, not being able to do two of the six ADLs or have a uh, or have a cognitive impairment which requires substantial uh, supervision. So it's, um, if they can't do two of the six of these ADLs and they have a, a plan of care you know, for the doctor and they have to go into skilled care and so forth, that's, you know, that's what triggers this benefit here. So there's some riders um, that are available. There's inflation riders which offer simple and compound inflation. You know, um, I know every, we all have uh, different opinions on these, but um, I'm a fan of just giving somebody more daily benefit if possible. If they, you know, you know, versus um, you know, versus adding on the five percenters, you know, I think uh, I think it works out better dollars wise. But you know, if you you know, if you got a young client, uh, maybe you know, like a 40, 45 year old client, maybe an inflation writer might make some sense for you there. Okay, so. Uh, we do pay cash with all our plans directly to the insured. Uh, nursing home assistance facility coverage provides benefit levels for custodial, intermediate, and skilled care for up to 360. You also can um, you also can do a 10% spousal discount, and then the benefits do restore once during the life of the policy. All right, so this right here is a pretty neat little uh, chart that uh, was created in that you know if you you know this short-term care product can be offered for for um, clients that you may have in the Medicare supplement world, or even your senior, even your MA world, this is a good product to take a look at for both sides. If they don't, you know, for both sides of those coins there. But uh, you know, as you know, probably from uh, dealing with the med sub side of the world, that Medicare will pay. You know, Medicare will pay for the first 20 days if you've been a patient in the hospital for at least three days. I think I told you before, the coding part of it all. A lot of times they're doing observation, which doesn't satisfy the three-day confinement rule, so then Medicare doesn't end up paying for the, uh, you know, for the uh, skilled care. So then that's where this plan would be immediate coverage with zero, the zero elimination period, or even if you want to do 20 days, you can do 20 days. Um, Medicare will pay as long as they're receiving skilled care, but if they're receiving intermediate or custodial, it doesn't. Uh, where ours does, we'll pay for intermediate, custodial, and skilled. So it's definitely much more thorough coverage than that. And Medicare will pay for a maximum of 100 days. So being able to have a benefit period of 360 days definitely can you know, extend your coverage and provide more dollars for your client at the end of the day. So let's take a look at some sample premiums with the Recover Cash here. If you had a client that you wanted to do a $200 per day, 90-day benefit period, zero limb, at age 55, you're looking at $17.56 a month. At age, 60, age 65, it's $33.85 a month. You added the home health care rider at age 65. You can see it's 38.77 a month for that. So here's the big question: What if your client doesn't qualify for Advantage Plus? Well, if they don't qualify for Advantage Plus, you can definitely use our short-term care cover cashier to take care of their maximum out-of-pocket exposure for skilled care. Because what you, what I've done here in this example is this: I've, I know that the maximum out-of-pocket is $6,700. I let's I assumed that and the average daily um, cost per day for skilled care is $150. It may be different in your particular areas, but whatever that number is. If I divided the $150 into 6700 
it gave me 44.6 days. So I just was able to, the way that our benefit periods are set up, let's say, okay, I'll take 150, put a 45-day benefit period on, there's zero elimination. At age 65, I can provide my, my client with 1596 per month for a monthly premium. I can provide them with this benefit. Even at age 70, for 2390 a month, I can provide them with this benefit. I thought this was pretty important and, and significant in, you know, in today's you know, in today's environment to be able to, you know, that, to give it its own slide. So I think uh, hopefully you guys find that to be uh, interesting also. From an underwriting perspective, uh, again, I think you guys got the theme here. It's a short yes-no application, uh, but we have a 10-year look back with the, uh, you know, with the recover cash. The rates are unisex and they are tobacco, not tobacco rates. We will do an Rx check on all applicants. If you have someone that's 75 and over, we will for sure be doing a personal health, personal history interview, which we all order from home office once the application is submitted. On occasion, for folks that are under 75, they may get a personal history interview if there's any discrepancies between the RX check and the application uh, answers provided. So, very simple underwriting. It's pretty you know pretty quick uh, pretty quick turnaround times. Now, I think uh, what that was, went over four products. Overall, the Advantage Plus, the Supplemental Solutions Lump Sum Cancer Plan, the CHS Protection Plus, and the Recover Cash. Now, I think those are uh, three pretty solid products in uh, Wall Street. Four pretty solid products overall, and you know, I think your opportunity to you know to sell these products are greatly depend on you just going back and talking to your existing book of business that you have and seeing seeing where this where these kind of products may fit into their um, into their um, you know, to their needs. Um, you know, whenever you're doing talking with new clients and you're and proposing new health plan options, you know, this may be something you might want to include with your, um, you know, with your options of when you're talking new health plans. You know, the more we talk about it, the better, more comfortable we become, and the more more opportunities to get yeses um, will be coming our way. So I'm always a big fan. You know, I always I always used to say, I think we all hear it. You got to get through a bunch of no's to get to all those yeses. So. We just got to keep talking, get no's, and, get, and then we'll get a bunch of yeses. So um, I think that's what, and that's pretty important there. But now, how to submit business to GTL? Number of different ways to do this too. <laughs> As you can tell, there's uh, some variety here. Um, we got the agent portal, which I mentioned earlier. Is um, you can be online, speaking to your client over the phone, and then uh, asking the client to do a voice verification call, and then submitting the application. Um, the voice verification number, in case anybody wants to write that down, is 855-267-4453. Uh, uh, that's 855-267-4453. Um, it really speeds up the application process by using the agent portal. Uh, the iPad application, it's only available for the Advantage Plus product. Our other products aren't available on the iPad app right now. But it's um, still it's a great way to, if you have an iPad, You've got a client there in front of you. You can have them sign with their finger. It's really neat, and it's really fast in terms of um, getting things, getting the applications issued, and getting uh, getting policies delivered electronically to your you know, to your client's inbox. Or we can even also mail those uh, you know paper uh, policies out to your client. Uh, for those of us that still like to write on paper, and um, and then we can do a draft on issue once the policy is approved. You can email the application to underwriting directly at und at gtlic.com, or you can even fax it to underwriting, which their fax number is 847-699-8493. Or there's another option. <laughs> and the other option is that you take an application and you get first month's premium. If that's the case, you can mail the application along with the first month's premium to our home office here, to Guarantee Trust Life, Attention New Business, 1275 Milwaukee Avenue, Glendale, Illinois, 60025. Now, one thing that you might want to just know in general is that if you do take an application by paper and then and then either email it or faxing it to us, we do not need your the originals of the applications. All we would all you need, keep those for your files. Once you send it to us, we're good. We need you know we'll always need copies of voided checks and such to make sure the PAC forms are are, are uh, processed properly. So. You know, so make sure you just uh, keep that in mind when you're doing uh, the electronic stuff that way. So now, 
from a contact perspective, you know, we're here to support URLs. You know, as just as URLs, there support. You know, is, is there support you if you guys, you know, so if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to give us a holler. We'd be happy to help you whenever possible. You know, our website again is gtlic.com. Our sales support area, uh, 800 number is um, 800-323-6907. From a new business perspective, if you need, if you ever come across that situation where you need to give an additional information for some reason, you can contact new business at 800-635-1993. Or a lot of times they'll even email you, so you may just reply just to their email. Or if you have questions about, you're not sure if someone qualifies for a particular product because of a, quest, of a way that they answer it, you feel free to call that new business number and they'll, you know, let you talk to an underwriter to get an opinion at least. Um, and then also, you know, obviously when we start writing, you know, when you have a client, you know, eventually there'll be a claim. They can contact our customer service at uh, 800-338-7452 to initiate the claim process. And what customer service will do is once they say, I need to file a claim, they'll send them out of uh, forms to complete. One thing I will tell you that I've, that I've found over the years in completing claims requests is that if you can uh, get from the hospital when they get discharged or even if they, uh, just in general before to submit with the claim, get a UB04 form. Umbrella Brother 004 form. That form is like uh, the best form to be able to submit with a claim. It provides so much information and detail to help our, uh, to help our claims adjusters be able to process the claim quickly for, for your clients. And most importantly, for those of you that aren't contracted currently with, uh, you know, with uh, GTL, please contact URL, you know, for the contracting, and also obviously for any questions you may have on the products or support in general at the 800-926-8875 number. So with that being said, I know we went through a lot of information, and uh, and I appreciate your patience and uh, attention. Uh, and I, you know, for those of you that are writing with GTL currently, thank you for the business. I, we appreciate it, and I appreciate it. For those of you that aren't contracted yet, looking forward to working with you. And um, I guess, Vince, I guess now's a great time to uh, go down that questions route. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dimitri, thank you very much for taking the time out of your uh, day. It was very informative. And, you know, just a little side note for everyone that's on this call, specifically my call centers and those of you that I've been training to sell Medicare over the phone. You know, I did my first GTL application. Embarrassing enough, I wish I knew about this earlier, but, you know, I did my first GTL application yesterday for a referral client of mine down in South Carolina uh, for his wife, actually. And after writing a Medicare Advantage plan, and at the point of sale, talking about this GTL policy, this was someone that basically, you know, had cancer in the past over 15 years ago and basically had that fear of cancer in the future and also was not real comfortable with the out-of-pocket for the hospitalization confinement on a per-day basis. I mean, this was an absolute layup for them because she was a disability case under 65. She wasn't able to get a Medicare supplement in the state of South Carolina for under 65 individuals. And when you do the math for a $0 Medicare Advantage plan, you add a $97 premium, which is a pretty nice premium for this product. I think Demetria will agree. Um, it is a really nice payout. You're talking about over $1,000 in commission off of one sale. So for those of you that like the e-applications that I've been training you, for those of you that are in call centers right now that are looking for that point of sale product, I actually used the e-application yesterday for the first time. It's very, very easy. It's very quick. Um, there's a rundown of questions that you should obviously prep your clients for. Um, you know, uh, Dimitri gave you the call-in number, the 855-267-4453, but the beauty of the application is that you, as the agent, are filling out the entire application. You're even signing the agent, the uh, client's name, rather, and then basically on a three-way call, calling into that line where they're basically going to ask them the first and last name of the applicant, home telephone number, date of birth, last four of their social, mother's maiden name, your name as the agent, name of the GTL product that they're being applied for, did they understand the questions on the applications and answer them truthfully, and do they understand that regular premium payments are required to maintain coverage. After that, policy is basically getting issued if they answered yes to all those questions. This is an absolute home run, and if you sell the product the correct way, you should be getting this on at least two-thirds of your applications minimum. Um, with that being said, I'll go through the 
questions that you guys have submitted. We have uh, two questions here, but please, if, if you have any questions, please type them into the question uh, panel on your webinar screen, and I will be glad to ask Dimitri. Uh, first one, Dimitri, that we have is, will there be an Android app soon instead of only an iPad app? Um, no, uh, right now we're still um, we're still working on developing the iPad app more completely. So um, unfortunately, what you could do is um, if you're connected to the internet, you could definitely use the um, you know the web browser through your through the Android tablet and uh, just go to gtlic.com, log in, and then do what um, what Vince was talking about with the uh, voice verification parts and finish up the application that way. But the only down you know the, you have to be connected to the internet though for that. Okay, excellent. Um, why is there only a 31-day hospital confinement benefit in Pennsylvania and not a 10-day benefit to coincide with an MA plan, or am I unclear on the plan specifics? Uh, Pencil, um, Pennsylvania is a, sta it's a state uh, requirement that it's a 31-day benefit period. Um, this, plan, this plan is a standalone product, so it's not designed for any specific product, you know, so it's, you know, not a you know it's not for just MAs, you know right. it could be you know it could be for anybody. So it's not it wasn't designed for just that. But the state statutes are only at 31 days. So. Okay, excellent. Are there any other questions before we uh, let Dimitri run? Those are the only two questions that I have here. Up oh, here, we just had another one pop up here. Um, you have the signature screen for the iPad app. What do you do for the online app? Uh, well, for the online app, you would uh, wherever it requests for a printed name or a signature, you just type in the insurer's name. Yeah, as the agent, uh, Paula, that's what I was just mentioning. I did yesterday. You, as the agent, are allowed to actually type in their name because you have to obviously do the verification call after that. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I ran through um, you know the protocol of this before I actually submitted my first application. And, it's actually a good idea to do the call first and then actually submit the application. That's how they would rather you do it, but you know, doing it backwards is not going to affect the application whatsoever. If you submit the electronic application and make the follow-up call right after that, the application will not be underwritten until that phone call is completed. Correct. Okay. All right, any other questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace? Well, not forever. You can call. Well, not forever. <laughs> But you can bother Dimitri. That's okay. Um, all right. So listen, um, you have Dimitri's contact information. You have my contact information. I want to thank Dimitri for taking the time out of his day. It was very informative. Thank you so much. And um, let's write some GTL, guys. Thanks, everybody. Oh, actually, yep, I got it. All right. That's it. That's it. Sorry about that. Dimitri, I'll be in touch with you in the next couple of days. That sounds great, Ben. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone.